Hi, I'm Richard from UK Home Cinemas and I'm here to introduce you to the latest in our series of time-lapse videos where you get to see the transformation of an ordinary room into a luxurious home cinema. The setting for this project is this beautiful villa in the south of France and that in itself made this a bigger challenge for us as it's about a thousand miles from Berkshire in the UK where we're based. I'm going to give you a very quick sneak preview in a few moments and after that we'll join Chris and myself at the start of our journey. So, sneak preview time. This is how the room looked when we started and this is how it looked when we'd finished. So, we've finally set off after loading this van up. I mean, gosh, it's so full because we've got loads of wooden frames and all sorts of stuff that's been made in advance and fabric covered panels and everything. So um, we're just driving down to the Channel Tunnel, ready for our uh, approximately 1,000 mile journey across France. So here we are in the middle of France. Chris has turned to drive and we're staying in a hotel tonight. We should be at our destination sometime tomorrow afternoon. So this is the room. It's, yeah, it's always intended to be a cinema, but it's never been made into one. Just got this raised floor for the seating and so on, and it's got the recesses which are ideal for putting the star ceiling in, and steps at the sides. And this is space to fit three seater in, and four seater here. So, what we're going to do is we've made all sorts of stuff, like for example, laser cut gold columns, and uh, we've made panels the right size for all the walls, and we've come up with a scheme to fit it all. And um, now we're going to get going. So, here we go with the time lapse and time to tell you some more background on this project. You can see that the ceiling was already shaped, but it was in need of some repair. So that was one of the first tasks, filling, sanding and painting the ceiling to get it back to a reasonable shape. We also had to move the hatch, which provides access to an existing air conditioning unit above the ceiling, as one of our columns needed to go where the hatch was positioned and it would have prevented the hatch from being opened. The scheme which we had designed uh, uses a series of wall battens to provide the structure to support the other items which we were using to line the room. So we're straight into measuring, marking up and fixing the wooden battens onto the wall in the exact positions as per our design drawings. Our clients had a major input on the decor as they had a vision to create something unashamedly opulent and reminiscent of older commercial cinemas which they had visited as children. But they also wanted it to look fresh and new and high tech. They were positive and supportive throughout the project and an absolute joy to work with. Over several months we had a series of phone conversations discussing many aspects of the design and exchanging drawings and sketches etc. I visited the villa to carefully measure all aspects of the room. Then everything was drawn up uh, using CAD design software. Um, we came up with a scheme involving fabric covered panels installed in a way which would be forgiving in case there were any small errors in my measurements. Once our clients had approved the design, we arranged for lots of stuff to be made in advance. Uh, that was um, the fabric panels, eight tin frames to go inside columns on the walls and laser cut panels which we had uh, professionally spray painted to form the faces of the columns. The decor throughout the villa is understated and tasteful, but for the cinema room our clients wanted to go for something pretty over the top and completely bespoke in a 1920s art deco style, but at the same time a modern 4K Dolby Atmos specification. Although the budget was sufficient, we wanted to maximise what we could achieve without exceeding the budget. In particular, we wanted to achieve great room acoustics, but we didn't want to have off-the-shelf acoustic panels visible, which might have detracted from the overall style of the room. For this reason, we planned to add acoustic absorption materials, such as rock wool, inside all of the fabric-covered panels which we were having made, but we didn't want the room to be totally dead. The design with removable panels enabled us to easily add or remove rock wall and other less absorptive materials to get differing amounts of acoustic absorption until we achieved the right result. 
We also wanted to use acoustic diffusion and bass traps, but all had to be unseen and inexpensive. So we used thick pieces of rock wall in the front corners of the room to function as bass traps. And those are hidden behind the screen, of course, and behind the uh, equipment. We fitted uh, inexpensive acoustic diffusion panels inside all of the wall columns um, behind acoustically transparent cloth. The screen is acoustically transparent with a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. The speaker layer is a 7.2.2 Dolby Atmos configuration and we also cater for the possibility of adding another pair of side surround speakers in the future. So two of the columns have as yet unused speaker housings built into them for possible future use. There are some compromises which had to be made on speaker positioning as our clients quite reasonably didn't want the speakers to be visible but did want the columns which housed them to be equally spaced for aesthetic reasons. The speakers are Dali Opticon and Dali Phantom and we used SVS subwoofers. The black fabric prevents stray light from illuminating the speakers and thus removes the risk of occasionally being able to see what's behind the screen. We use the Control 4 system to make everything user-friendly, including control of the room lighting. Uh, here I am fitting the touchscreen and other control panels, lighting, dimmer, etc. As with most of our room transformation projects, we installed a fibre optic star ceiling. In this case, two areas of star ceiling using custom sized panels. We also wanted to achieve a halo lighting effect around the edges of the star ceiling panels. And for these areas, we were keen that the LED strips could be set to different colours. So we used RGBW LED strips. We also fitted LED strips into the wall columns, but these were warm white ones to match the main room lighting. We installed Art Deco style wall sconces which we sprayed gold to match the columns. Again this was great design input from our clients. The idea of spraying them gold initially seemed a bit crazy to us until we saw the final results and then we had to concede that our clients design vision was spot on. Yes it's extreme but that's what we were all aiming for. The projectors are JVC DLA N5, which has the ability to store and recall settings for zoom, focus, and lens shift to cater for different aspect ratios. The width of the image will, of course, be set correctly for each aspect ratio, but the height will always be the same height as the screen. Our clients were keen for everything to look built in, and so we made subwoofer covers upholstered with speaker cloth and finished with laser cut panels. We used off-the-shelf cabinets, but we made them look bespoke, again, by using laser-cut panels. Time to bring in the seats. The final icing on the cake was a set of mouldings fixed to the ceiling to form the illusion of ceiling panels. We always get asked how much these things cost. I don't want to comment on the exact price of this project, but generally a reasonable budget for a room transformation project similar to this would be somewhere in the region of 65,000 UK pounds or the equivalent of about 85,000 US dollars. Finally, after all of those weeks of work, time to enjoy the finished cinema room. And of course the uh, very long drive home. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching.